Hello travelers, Tara here, and I'm going to come to you with a quick open reading. Um, I realized I haven't done one for the month of October. Um, website members, all 24 videos are posted uh, on the site. They are ready to go. There might be some that are mislabeled. I'll go back and fix that, so please forgive me. It's actually taking me a lot longer now to upload them than uh, it used to because the program that I use, they've done an update and they've changed some things. Um, I also posted up uh, the moon report for you. We just had the full moon in Aries yesterday. And uh, I sent out a newsletter um, for you. So keep an eye out for those of you who opened it and read it. For those of you who signed up for it, but you're not getting it, please check your spam folder. Um, you don't need to be a website member in order to sign up for the newsletter, but that is typically where I do uh, post specials uh, on the readings, discounts, things of that nature, and, and some things that I have going on. Um, sometime, today's Monday, right? Yeah. Okay. So sometime uh, this week, I'm going to be posting up uh, a 21 card reading in the wild card gallery. So once you see that posted, grab your notebooks, take some notes, things of that nature. So with that being said, we're going to just go ahead and kind of do a, we are zipping through October. It's, it's crazy. Um, we're going to be using the radiant white deck. More than likely, I will be clarifying with the Indovina Sibilas. Um, I do have the La Vida Sibilas here. I have my Conjure cards. And we're going to be wrapping this reading up with a Psychic Oracle Tarot. Things are kind of getting back to normal. I want to thank all of you for <laughs> sending me condolences on my floors. I really, <laughs> I really appreciate that. That's so funny. But thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. I was kind of heartbroken. Really, I was, but it's all right. So um, with that said, let's go ahead and lay the cards. Now, this is a general reading, and so the messages will not resonate with everyone. Um, that does require a personal reading. I have several levels of readings, packages, reading packages, all the way from one question up to uh, an open reading, like there's no set number of questions. That's the 90-minute reading. Um, and so there are several packages to suit your wallet. Uh, I am also uh, about to bring a trial period open onto the website. So if you are, let's say you're interested, you want to come in, you know, for seven days, you can come in for seven days. You can look at the articles, you can get your charts, you can get your eBooks, you can. Um, and then after seven days, if you choose the trial will end, but you can choose to upgrade from there to the 30 day, the six month or the one year membership. So I'm working on that, and that'll be announced in the newsletter. So make sure that you sign up to get to the website, to book any product that I have, or to sign up for the newsletter. You will simply click on the one of the eyes that shows up here in the right-hand corner, and that'll take you directly over to the website. So with that being said, hold on one second. Luke, Luke, I need you to go sit down. Please go sit down. You know what? This is so weird. I started watching... Um, what do you call it? I started watching The Handmaid's Tale last night. Yeah, I got Hulu. So I started watching that last night. Now, I read the book a long, long time. I mean, it was really oh, over 20 years ago. And it's one of my favorite books by Margaret Atwood. And I had forgotten the name of the characters. So I'm lying in bed last night. And then, was it, the second episode, She's her husband's name is Luke. That's my dog's name. Her daughter's name is Hannah. That's my daughter's name. Then another episode comes along and somebody's talking about her cats or she's talking about and the cats names are Lucy and Ethel. My neighbor who lives across the street has two dogs named Lucy and Ethel. And I like I almost fell out of bed. I was like what the hell? So I got to keep watching and I just got into the first uh I think I'm into the first season whatever the case may be. But it's really good. It's very rare that you uh, can see a TV show that's like good like the book, you know. So that's pretty awesome. 
I just wonder why all of the names are cropping up like around me. That's so weird. It kind of freaks me out. But anyway, to make a long story short, let's go ahead and get into the reading. And uh, we're going to lay nine cards and just do it. Here we go. The Wheel of Fortune. Wow, most definitely. Okay. The Fool card. Oh, that's big energy. I haven't had a chance to look. Normally, I bring you guys to planetary placements and readings. I haven't even had time to look, honestly. So, okay. There's the chariot card. So, we're dealing with Jupiter, the planet Jupiter. We're dealing with the planet Uranus or Uranus. Okay. <laughs> and we're dealing with the sign of Cancer, which is ruled by the body of the moon. So... Three planetary aspects, all major arcana cards. All right. Oh, well, there's the justice card. This is, uh, represents the sign of Libra, and it is ruled by the planet Venus. So now we have four major arcana cards. Here is the Knight of Cups. Well, well, well. Oh, the Eight of Cups. This represents the only eclipsed moon in the deck. So this could have most definitely have to do with some kind of planetary transit that may be affecting your natal chart. This is why you come to the website. It's good to have your chart. There's the three of cups. Oh, wow. There's the nine of cups. How awesome is that? Oh, well, and there is the Empress card. Well, well, well. Five major arcana cards. For those of you who are new to my channel or you're new to tarot card reading, <clears throat> the major arcana cards um, hold the most sway. Okay, in other words, they, they hold the most power in the reading. Why? Because they represent spiritual lessons or some type of spiritual journey. Um, one, two, three, four, five. So the fact that there are five major arcana out of nine cards tell me that this is something big. Okay, there's a lot of water here. For those of you who don't know, astrology is based on um, the seasons. Uh, the seasons have three months contained within those three months that we also have the elements. So we have Cancer, which is a water card or sign, the Knight of Cups, the Eight of Cups, the Three of Cups, and the Nine of Cups. So this is really in term, and these cards, um, if they're not major arcana, then they, these are known as pip cards. So these are going to be your numbered cards plus your court cards, okay? And the court cards are your pages, your knights, your kings, and your queens. So we have one, two, three, four pip cards here. We have a fire element. This is an air element. Sometimes it, it's it's kind of air and fire because of Uranus. Um, the, the what am I trying to say? Since Uranus rules electricity, so it's it's kind of got that underlying principle of fire, but it's it's an air thing. We have water. We have another air. Libra is an air sign, which is funny because Libra is ruled by Venus. And Venus is really an Earth element, okay? It's one of the personal planets, and it's something we can see with the naked eye from, from Earth. Um, so I have two representations of Venus, two representations of the moon. Cancer ruled by the moon. Here with this uh, eclipsed moon. 
And all of these cup cards, what is under the deck? What is over the reading? It is the Ten of Swords. So, perhaps, that Ten of Swords is called, um, it, it represents the energy of Sun and Gemini. Um, and it, it represents the idea of either speaking before you have all of the facts and it back backfires on you, but it can also be this um, idea that literally somebody's going to stab you in the back. And not only did they stab you in the back, they want to make sure you were dead because 10 swords is overkill. You only need one well-placed sword. Swords represent thoughts, beliefs, perceptions, ideas, and communications. This could even be the idea maybe for some of you, you may have been dealing with the back issues, saying there's some pain, whatever. But basically for me, the card, the way it, it, it presents itself to me is this is the darkest before the dawn. This is the card that says, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I just, I can't do it anymore. I'm tired. This could be the idea. I can't believe somebody did that to me where they completely have knocked you down and, and you have to kind of like recoup. Now, <clears throat> the Wheel of Fortune representing the sign of Jupiter, right? Jupiter is the guru planet. Jupiter brings, it's, it's known as the Grand Benefic. Um, it brings opportunity, expansion, and growth. Uh, but there's also a negative side to Jupiter, which can be over uh, excesses or overindulgence or um, that kind of over-the-top thinking. Here with the full card representing the planet of Uranus, Uranus is that sudden insight. It is that crackling energy. It is that the beginning of something. It is that creative force, the fool. It's the beginning of our journey. Here with the chariot representing the moon, home, family, women, children. Now, when I interpret charts, astrology charts or natal charts, um, to me, the typically, traditionally, the fourth house shows the mother. But for me, it always shows the father. Okay, and the planets that are placed in that fourth house can tell you a lot about your father. And the 10th house tells about the mother. That's completely opposite of the way it's done traditionally, but that's how it works for me. It just seems to work better. Justice. Well, what is justice? Justice is just that. It's justice. We know that um, things are not always fair. Things are not always equitable. And even when crap goes the wrong way, we can say in effect that maybe that's exactly the way it's supposed to happen. So we don't always agree with justice, but justice is about weighing up the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, looking at all of the evidence and then trying to make a fair and impartial decision. It is also about balance, trying to balance out two different things, two different subjects. I'm sorry, two different substances. Um, balancing out sand and water. You can get those things to balance, but you're going to have to kind of juggle it a little bit, right? Uh, does sand weigh more than water? Or, or are you going to put more water on the scale than sand, but you're going to have to try to balance it out? Nights always, to me, represent events. It, it really traditionally, yes, it does speak about some kind of message, right? But this message um, creates some kind of movement. It's not like sort of like a page. Page brings messages and news, but it kind of, that's just the opening salvo, right? The page, nights actually bring movement into a situation or a spread. Um, and the Empress is just that. Um, she is the goddess of summer. Uh, she's also pregnant. So this is the idea that she can give birth. She's typically looked at as the mother in the tarot, but she she has the ability to bring forth life. There's creativity, but because she represents Venus, uh, Venus is about harmony, beauty, uh, diplomacy. That's why she's the empress. She's not a queen. She's the empress. Now, I only have one 
court card here. Court cards typically represent people. They can. Um, so for some of you, this could be the idea that <clears throat> you know this is this is what I'm 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 getting. There's there's several things. This is either our advice card or this is the energy over the situation now. So perhaps some of you have had an extremely disappointing uh, situation in your life or you've had a very um, tense time dealing with someone. You've come through something. Um, I have seen this card show up when it speaks to a legal issue, the justice card. <clears throat> But the Wheel of Fortune comes in to tell you that, you know, you can be high on the wheel and then things are going to turn or you can be at the bottom and you'll get a chance to come back to the top. It's the cycle, right? You can only be high for so long before you start to, the wheel starts to turn. Once you're at the very bottom, there's no place else to go back but, you know, but to go up. Um, so it's the cycle. It's it's neither a reward nor punishment. It's just the cycle, the way things are. As life follows death or death follows life, it's the cycle. The Fool card speaks to going on some new kind of journey. Now, for some of you, this could be the journey of um, trying to determine what home means for you or what security means for you or... Um, a new journey of an emotional type. To me, it kind of reads like a recovery from this Ten of Swords here. With the Justice card, this could be the idea that you finally have gotten the... Because these are karma cards. Wheel of Fortune is, is the biggest karma card. And it's a ten. And tens say that would be two tens. Tens speak to the end of a phase or relationship in a phase, but tens can also speak to uh, a career, financial and career change for the better. Maybe for some of you, this is literally because sometimes the wheel, the wheel of fortune will speak to overseas travel. This could literally be you guys going overseas. You may have to travel overseas to find your... It could be that you traveled overseas and things didn't go well. Or you were dealing with somebody from overseas. Sometimes this card will show up when you're dealing with um, foreigners. And by foreigners, I mean people that literally are foreign to you. They may be of a different race, a different uh, class, a different socioeconomic status, definitely from a different country. Uh, they may be of a different sexual um, orientation than you. So it can it can speak to that. So it it it, it speaks about religion and philosophy, acceptance and compassion, knowing that we're all kind of connected together. Here with this full card, that's a ten. That's an eleven. So I have I have this um, kind of where this starts in the middle. It, 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 and it, it kind of ends and culminates quickly. And what I mean by that is I only have two threes here, right? But the rest of the cards, it's a zero and a three. Then I have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay? So my twos are missing, my fours are missing, my aces are missing, even though that the tens... All 10 cards are related to aces, which is a one. So I'm not exactly sure if some of you, maybe you got some kind of windfall. Maybe you got some kind of money. Maybe you got some kind of promotion. Maybe you got some kind of job. Maybe you, you won um, some kind of legal fight. The wheel finally turned, your case came through, and here you are, you're celebrating. Because that's what this card is. This card is about celebrating. It can be about graduations, weddings, baby showers, um, you know, just celebrating some kind of life events. Maybe some of you had to travel in order to do that. Or maybe that afforded you the opportunity to travel. I get the sense that in one respect, this night does show up as a person, but it's also an event. 
I think out of the blue, this person shows up completely unconventional, unlike anybody or anything you've ever met. They may be younger than you. But I'm going to tell you something about the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups is not a steady energy. It's a knight. It's a, a relatively young energy. And the fact that this horse has not stepped across that stream yet. So this tells me whatever this thing is, it's tentative. You know? There's a, there's a bit of hesitancy with it. But even still... He's holding the Ace of Cups, but the Ace, this cup, this offer leads to the Eight of Cups. And the Eight of Cups is the card of saying, you know, everything else in my life may be grand. I may have won this and I have an opportunity, some news. Maybe I get a chance to go travel or maybe somebody new shows up in my life. But, you know, something is just not, something is still missing. And maybe I need to go off on a quest to find it. With all of these major arcana cards, this does tell me that it kind of a, it may harken back for some of you to the last eclipse. Could be speaking about the next series of eclipses that we, we come over. And eclipses are game changers. And you never know how um, the storyline of an eclipse is going to play out. Most definitely, it will be the same theme coming up around. It could be 19 years, 20 years down the road. But you, you can bet, best believe it's, it's the ending of a cycle. Usually, these are 18 to 19 year cycles, okay? But I think what there's, there's a lot of contradictory kind of energy here because the, the, the nighting here is like suddenly... Things change. You had to walk away from something, but you end up finding the happiness perhaps that you, you've you been searching for. Maybe you had to lose something to do that. This card is telling me that if you remain focused on whatever it is that you're, you're if you have a destination, you, you're going to have to balance out those energies in order to get to where you're going. I'm not sure what the Justice card is trying to tell me here. This, this is why I say this is kind of a weird energy. Not only is it this, but then it leads us into this other version of Venus. Libra is about partnerships. And so um, this can be business partnerships, marriages, friendships, uh, business part, did I say that? I don't know. Um, relationships that you have with your children, it's a public house. This is why it shows up as a justice card. You get married, you make, some people make the announcement, uh, you go buy the rings, you put all the stuff together to, to get the wedding and the, the reception, you send out the invitations, then you stand before the public and you speak your vows. First, you got to go get the damn license, right? <laughs> so, so that's why it's considered the house of legalities or the the house of contracts. Uh, that the house of partnerships. I don't really like that. It is true. I prefer it to be the contractual house, the legal, the house of legalities. Okay. But Venus itself is about making things attractive. It's about right relationships and trying to convince people why it is they should come along with you. What are they going to get out of it? You know, because you want to walk away with everybody kind of getting what they want, or at least everybody feeling good about getting what they want. But they say that the mark of a good contract is that nobody gets what they want, but everybody can come to an agreement, right? We see that. And then we see this idea that you, you grab a hold of those reins. You get that energy under control. You just move forward with it. But then it's like all of a sudden when you arrive, you don't, what, what's there is not really what you want. Now, I will tell you that for some of you, whenever I see this card with this card, 
this could mean the announcement of a, a pregnancy or a birth. Now, I know that many of you who watch me are older. you like, you ain't in childbearing years no more, and I get that. But this could be maybe having to do with a daughter or a niece, somebody in the family, maybe somebody in the fr uh, uh, who's a friend. Um, but it also speaks to the birth of something new. What is pregnancy but a gestational period? Where things are, you're working on things, things are being worked on, they're, you know, being um, <clears throat> molded and formed under this gestational period. The Nine of Cups basically just tells you that it's everything that you wished for, but then the negative part of that is be careful what you wish for. So even though these cards all have positive meanings, they most definitely have a shadow side. That's that up and down, the wheel, the cycle, black and white. There has to be some kind of balance. Now I'm looking at the two um, threes here. And two threes can sometimes mean, first, that there's going to be a suspension of events before things can move forward. That's that gestational period that I'm speaking about. But two threes can also mean excessive flirting and cheating, that there may be at least three people in this situation. I don't see any children here, so I don't think this is a necessarily a divorce issue or a child custody issue, although it very well could be. This is nodal activity. Well, the nodes of the moon changing. So the moon, I think, has a lot to do with this. The movement, and the moon moves every 2.4 days into a new sign and into a new house. But the moon simply represents the inner personality or the inner life of an individual. That's what your emotions are. Right? It's that secret inner self that you keep to yourself. You don't share with everybody else. So, what I'm going to do, let me take a look and see uh, if these pip cards are going to tell me anything placed by any of these, uh, what do you call it? major arcana cards. What I can tell you, this row across the top says that this is a huge major change. This is something brand new and it's something that you need to get a handle on. Don't be foolish. Don't leap into something very soon. You need to really kind of grab a hold of those reins and drive this thing slowly. There is sometimes when new events happen, particularly if they're good things. We find good fortune after, you know, a long time of being down at the bottom of the wheel that we want to rush around and do everything. But I, I dare say that it will behoove you to be like this charioteer here. Okay, he don't even got no reins, but he's still driving that 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 train. I do feel that for some of you, this, again, as I say, some, some kind of cosmology event, um, the alignment of the stars. Now, that being said, the stars don't cause things to happen, okay? And they don't cause people to do things. They don't compel, they impel. So, but you always have choice, right? <clears throat> you can choose to, to go with the flow or you can choose to go against it. You can choose to listen to others or you can choose to follow your intuition. So, Let's take a look. I'm in the suit of cups. There's a lot of cup energy here. Um, well, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? With the chariot card, eight of cups with the chariot card. It is a warning not to get involved with unnecessary gossip, uncomfortable situations, or behave in a judgmental way. Instead, focus on yourself, 
your goals and aspirations and channel your energies towards your own success. That's the fertility of the thing, the planting of the seeds. It asks that you contain yourself and direct your focus and energies towards achieving your goals and aspirations. Oh, now, isn't that interesting? Let me go back to the Three of Cups because I can't look at this night, okay? This is just telling me there's some movement here. <clears throat> With the uh, the three of cups with the empress may be implying news of a pregnancy or the birth of a child. I said that, but again, you know, to broaden that meaning out, um, you know, some of you may be past childbearing years, so maybe this might have news to do with news of a child. This nine of cups never really tells me anything except that this is the wish card. And I would take it past, present, future, past, present, future with the interplay of the cards that some of you really are going to have something to celebrate. And it's going to be exactly everything that you hoped and you dreamed and you wished it. And it's going to kind of put you in a good place. Okay. And I'm not sure if this is through some kind of legal issue, if this is through some kind of quote unquote, spiritual awakening, or if this really comes through some individual who shows up, who for all intents and purposes, may be a bit sketchy. That's it. I can't look at anything else. So I want to read to you the meaning of the fool card and the meaning of the justice card, because I think and looking at this, these are two of the, that's the, the feeling that the, that's the energy that's coming off of these cards is that those two cards are the most important. It is a zero card. Now, The Fool depicts a situation where you will have to think very carefully before making your final decision. It indicates that a new phase of life is about to begin and it asks that you abandon the old to enable you to begin something new. That's why you're being asked to summon up your courage and your focus. Sometimes it is necessary to take risk in order to force change. Use discernment as sometimes it is wiser to stay put. It indicates that it is important to trust your own judgment and plan for the future, but to do so wisely. It speaks of risks that need to be taken in order to, pro to progress along your path. It indicates a time of new projects and enthusiastic ideas, happiness, laughter, and spontaneity. You see that. It tells you to trust in life. It infers that a great journey is about to begin. Some of you are literally going to be moving. You're going to be leaving behind some things. But once you get to where you're going, everything is going to be okay. It often suggests that the time for change is coming. It may be telling you that it is time to face reality. And maybe that's what this is. You have reality has finally hit you in the face. I can go no further. I can expend no more energy. I cannot discuss this anymore. Everything that's done is done. Underneath that's a five of cups. It signifies that past mistakes must be looked into as lessons for learned through the experience. It is an indicate it is indicating that you may be at a crossroads in life. Maybe that's why you haven't stepped over because you're not sure. Some of you are going to step over. Most definitely. You're going to ditch this horse and you're going to continue on foot. <laughs> okay. Um, it is a message to look to your mistakes of the past. As many lessons have been learned, you are urged not to make the same mistakes again. Learn from the past. It is a reminder that you must learn for yourself and for the benefit of others. It indicates a time of new projects and enthusiastic ideas. A great journey in life may begin. 
It tells of treading an unknown path with faith and trust as we seek to find spiritual understanding and purpose while still partaking of earth, earthly life, pain, and pleasure. That's what all these cups are talking about. Again, that's the balance. You can't, if you never experience pain, then you don't know what joy is. Does that make sense? You have nothing to compare it to. To be in touch with the fool is to be in, in touch with trust in life's goodness. And somehow those who trust, who truly trust, seem to be well rewarded. There's a lot of sadness uh, per se in, in one that's running underneath this. There's that five of cups underneath. All right. And this could be where some of you are on the wheel right now. You you haven't yet come out of this, but this is a 10 and it tells me that once you come out of it and you, you recognize whatever this thing is um, and that it, it just is what it is, right? This, this is going to, to lead you to where you need to be. I want to look at this justice card. It may be a wacky ass trip on how you get there. You know what I'm saying? You may have to go across water. Then you may have to cross the mountains. Then you may have to take a car. Then you may have to wait a little while because you're kind of stuck to see what's happening. Then you got to take a horse. Then you got to walk on foot. Either way, you should eventually arrive at where you want to be. Now, in terms of business and finances, uh, the Empress is pretty good. But let me get to the Justice card first for you. It is implying that a fair and just decision has been made after a situation has been fully investigated. It tells that justice has been served. It asks that you rely upon your intuition and go ahead with plans. Do not allow anyone to sway you from your path or influence you against your better judgment. Somebody who's really unconventional can come in and just try to distract you. But this is also saying don't be foolish. It tells of a focus on matters concerning with the law and partnership. If you are in the throes of obtaining justice, especially with legal documents, solicitors, and all types of legal actions, the outcomes are successful. If this issue relates to career choice, the justice card leans favorably towards social work, the police force, careers involving legal issues, and governmental departments. Well, I don't know about that. So let me read because these two cards are pivotal too. This was supposed to be a, uh, I'm going to start with the Empress, a short reading, but apparently uh, my guides wanted me to extend this out. It may be indicating material wealth, marriage, the promise of growth, and a message that you will soon be rewarded from your past efforts. Fulfillment, satisfaction, and joy are ahead of you. We see it. It brings with her the attributes of growth, fertility, and prosperity all around. She implies that needs are fulfilled and there is much satisfaction and joy to be had. It is an indication that it is time to reap the benefits of a bountiful harvest. Expect happy conclusions. Mm -hmm. It tells it is an excellent time to begin new projects because they have a high potential for success. It tells of recognition and rewards for your efforts. You may receive more than you expected. As a card of good fortune, it signifies that if we are gentle and caring as well as patient, we can bring anything we desire to fruition. We have to be able to wait until the time is right for action so that we can reap the rewards. Hard work pays off and relationships become satisfying. It represents the emotions and indicates the importance of following your instincts and feelings. It advises that you should not be redirected by thought or action. I think that's what this is. It tells you not to be disillusioned by delays, but trust your instincts and intuition and there will be success in the future. Abundance flows into your life with love, beauty, good health, and domestic stability. It is an indication of plans coming to fruition. Pleasure and success is imminent. 
It radiates renewal and may be implying material gains in the, in the offing. It tells that new ideas produce excellent outcomes that inspire further ideas and, uh, and goals to achieve. Wheel of Fortune. I love the Wheel of Fortune. Indicates fate and events beyond human control. It indicates good luck or the optimistic outlook that things will have a positive result. It may also indicate, however, that someone has a fatalistic outlook on life, leaving too much to chance and failing to make decisions. It may be asking you to prepare to adapt to changing circumstances. It tells of good luck, good fortune, success, and rewards. It tells that a change for the better is about to commence. Things are looking up from this time, so stay, so maintain faith. It may be implying that you are feeling more in control of your life. Therefore, it is a good time to plan and implement new ideas and projects. The presence of the wheel indicates that it is important to let things run their natural course. Family planning issues can come to the fore when this appears in a spread. It tells of a focus on potential success following changes in a life and or lifestyle. That's what this is. It may be telling you that things are not always governed by chance and that you have the power to change your life. That's that. And that. It tells you that you are able to use your knowledge and to make appropriate changes for yourself. It indicates a new direction and an unexpected change of luck and asks that you adapt to the different circumstances. Remember that on the wheel, when you are down there, the only way is up as the wheel is spinning in your favor at this time. Something major is about to change for someone out there. Now, I don't know what this is. But I will tell you this much. There's something about this nine of cups. I'm going to use these Sabilas here. And I'm going to look at the justice card. The eight of cups. And this nine of cups. There's something about the nine of cups. go to a nine, then there's six cups, then we're back up to a nine. This is a ten of cups. Excuse me. This is a four of cups. But it's like whatever this knight, whomever this knight represents, or whatever this knight represents, some of you are going to have to walk away from it in, in order to actually gain in any way, okay? Be it uh, love, finance, romance. You're going to have to walk away from something because you're, you're missing something. Isn't that funny? Gran Consolazione. Success. An achievement after a long time. The pensiero, thought and meditation. And the precious presence. So I, I kind of get the sense for some of you this is a legal issue. Um, something that has to do with probably what you've already achieved. Now you're at a point where you're going to have to weigh up the pros and cons because it looks as though... There's another gift on the back side of it. That's a gift that's not unselfish. This could be somebody coming with you with coming at you with some kind of contractual issue saying, hey, look, you've done all of this, but if you do this, I'll give you that. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, if it's the same crap that had you looking like that, I don't know. Is it worth it? I don't know. 
So let's look at this Eight of Cups. Interesting. The Lecherezza. This is the card of tact and diplomacy and a changing sensitivity. That's what Venus is all about. Tact and diplomacy. Being able to create harmonious outcomes. La Costanza. This is the unchanging nature of the situation. And the Dilidanti. This is stupid actions and stupid behavior. Now, I don't know why that card has shown up. Maybe this is the idea that you're dealing with somebody who just has been doing the same old thing over and over and over again, and now you is not feeling it. So that's why you walk away from it. Is it worth it? What and who is more important than money or gold? Peace of mind, good health, um, no drama. This Nine of Cups. The Il Nemico. Remember, I kept telling you there's something about this Nine of Cups. La Donna del Servizio. And would you look at that? The Lamonte, male lover. Same sex or heterosexual. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this card is telling me that you've been dealing with somebody in the past who, in effect, was kind of like an enemy. But dealing with that enemy, with that individual, really was the best thing that has ever happened to you because it opens up the door for somebody new to come in. I'm not, don't quote me on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a few cards. This could even be somebody coming back and going, you know what? I realized I was acting stupid and I'm happy for you now that things are, <laughs> you know what I mean? It could be one of those things. Why? Because the time has come now to put things in the past in the past. Maybe this is simply a peace offering. Okay? Somebody's showing up at your wedding. But maybe he comes to wish you good fortune. This is a widow. A reconciliation. And there's the journey. I think this is somebody that you had separated. Maybe you separated from somebody and now you're on a new path. There's somebody new in your life, coming into your life. Maybe this person, you will run across this person when you are traveling. But this is definitely telling you that whatever this was, it is time now for you to put that crap down. Don't carry it anymore. Leave it behind you because something new is most definitely coming. Let me see what... Uh... Let's take a look at this Knight of Cups here in the center. Five of Diamonds. <laughs> Nine of Hearts, like another Nine of Cups. And the Eight of Diamonds. That's the news. That's the message. This is the event. And what it tells us is this. Unexpected news. It can speak to success in business enterprises. Again, we get this idea that it can indicate happiness and success. It speaks to a change for the better, a birth or good news for a child and can be a good time to start new projects. The nine of hearts is just that. It is the card of satisfaction. All of your dreams and desires come true. It shows good fortune is on the way, particularly after a difficult financial time. And sometimes 
the cups will show up when this is really all about finances. People don't realize how their financial circumstances can affect their emotions and vice versa, how your emotions can affect your money making uh, ability. Because these are diamonds. The eight of diamonds. Hard work brings success and money. You will have success. Keep your eyes on the goal and don't become distracted. It indicates a new job or change in a job situation, but it can also indicate a new love on a trip taken. Well, let's pull a Psychic Oracle Tarot on that. So I say, it doesn't always mean pregnancy in that sense. It's just talking about really the birth of something new. And to me, it kind of reads as though this was um, a really difficult financial time for some of you, even though there are no pentacles here. Okay. Maybe you broke up in the pen. Maybe you had fight with your last lover because the money wasn't ever right. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. Ready? Holy shit. It is the Empress card. Now, some of you are going to have a baby. This is most definitely true. But for others of you, this is going to be a new way of showing your own power. Through this card, the manifestation of growth is on the horizon. You are the creator and the seeds that have been planted in the past, whether they were happiness, comfort, abundance, prosperity, family, children, ideas, or even thoughts are now ready to give birth into your world. Mm -hmm. Be patient as you watch your seeds take root and grow. Nurture them as they become strong and healthy. Open yourself to the life force of the universe. This card also represents femininity and Mother Earth who is calling to you. The arms of her beauty are reaching out. She wants to embrace you on her seashores, mountains, forests, and gardens. Go to her and meet her halfway. That's that trip. That's, that's this. Acknowledge that the same energy that makes up the heavens, earth, plants, animals, and mineral kingdom is also part of you. Start nurturing yourself and infuse your soul with love and compassion. Soon others will see and feel your devotion. As you interact with others around you now, or even if you're in the midst of solving a problem, use gentle care and kindness as you handle such situations. This isn't a time for you to be inconsiderate, possessive, domineering, forceful, or pushy. Act from the loving space of your heart center. The benevolent energy that resides there will assist you in making sacrifices in order to care for and help others as well as yourself. And I kind of think that that's what this is. Because as I say, there are some people in some situations and some things that are more precious than money and gold that you literally cannot put a price tag on. You know, good health, good friends, um, a good social life, um, a good spiritual or religious foundation, um, food, you know, all of the basic necessities being met. Um, and sometimes situations and people can come along to distract you from what those good things are. 
and they, you know, you can go down uh, a rabbit hole. But I think for whomever recognizes this, whatever this is, take your time. Uh, if you are coming back from heartache and despair, maybe even you're trying to recover physically from some kind of illness. Um, the time is coming back around where things are definitely going to get better and you are going to end up finding yourself really in a better posi position than you were at the start of this. Granted, some of you are going to have to walk away and leave something behind. But eight say that this is about the nearing of a completion of events. Eights are something very positive. Now, sometimes there can be there can be a delay. But if you remain focused and determined, you will arrive exactly where you want to be. Okay? That's what I have for you. Hope those messages help. Again, you can click on the eye and go right over to the website. Till next time, namaste.